Before we dive into part three, previously on our story, Arthur and Gwen, brought together by a one-night stand, find themselves navigating unexpected parenthood. With custody battles looming, Arthur seeks legal assistance to secure his rights as a father while keeping their child a secret from his family. Meanwhile, Gwen grapples with family issues, including mistreatment from her stepsister Camilla. Catch up with part 1 and 2 through the link in the description below. Now, let's jump back into the action as we see how Arthur and Gwen's story unfolds in part 3. Arthur tells her he's been thinking a ton about stuff, not happy with how he's been dealing with things. That's why he's deciding to step up and take responsibility. She's confused, saying he's not making sense. She's already agreed to his visitation rights, and she doesn't want their situation to be an excuse for anything like this. He tells her he wants her to understand there are things about the situation he doesn't feel bad about, like meeting her, chatting with her, and being intimate. She responds, telling him not to say those things lightly. He then asks her opinion on his new proposal, his phone rings, and he tells whoever's calling that he'll arrive soon. Gwen thinks to herself that she had a great dad, but she never experienced what a regular family is all about while growing up. Even now, the only family she has left treats her badly. She's puzzled because she doesn't understand why her family treats her so poorly. When Leon was born, she made up her mind to be the best mom she could be. But what does it mean to be a family, anyway? Everything changed for her when Arthur showed up again in their lives. She wonders why someone as impressive as him would choose her. She believes having Arthur around is good for Leon, but what about them? She tells Arthur they hardly know anything about each other, and they are not in love. She thinks it's not a real solution. It's just setting them up for more problems. He asks her how she can be so sure when they haven't even given it a shot. He assures her he's not the type to jump into bed with just anyone. He wonders if she's seeing someone else, but she says no. He suggests they give it a try, and they should talk about it seriously later, like grown-ups. He plans to come over to her place after work, and he'll give her a call beforehand. She knows she has to come clean about what really happened that night, the reason why she's been avoiding him. At the meeting with Camilla, one of Arthur's aunt asks where he is. Percy apologizes, explaining that Arthur had to handle something important, but assures them he'll be back shortly. Arthur's aunt apologizes for his behavior, suggesting they start without him. Camilla reassures her, saying it's not a big deal. The aunt turns to the attorney and asks about the situation. He replies that everything seems fine except for the fact that the owner has an heir. He explains that they need the legal heir from her father's legitimate marriage to give consent for the deal to proceed. Without it, they can't move forward legally. So, they're stuck at this point until they figure it out. They'll search for another way around it, but she'll need to persuade the heir to join their next meeting if possible. Later, as they are all standing together, Arthur comes by, apologizing for being late. Camilla thinks to herself that he's the man who was with Gwen earlier. I in Arthur's office, his aunt questions him about his whereabouts. He apologizes, explaining he had some things to sort out. She reminds him that both she and his father worked hard to build the company, and she won't tolerate his unprofessional behavior anymore. Later at the office, Percy apologizes to Arthur, saying he gave it his all. Arthur agrees, admitting that he's starting to consider resigning from his job. He mentions his thinking about getting married, and Percy questions if he's rushing into things. Arthur points out they have a child together. Percy asks who else knows about it, and Arthur replies that only him, Nana, and Gareth are aware. Percy inquires about the child's age, and Arthur mentions that their son is now seven months old. Percy then wonders where the child is, and Arthur explains he's at one of his properties. Arthur admits he's been handling everything badly, he's only just begun communicating with Gwen and started their new relationship by making threats, dot he believed if he talked to her like usual, she wouldn't agree to anything. So, he kept them hidden, pretending it was for their safety. But deep down, he realizes he was just scared of her leaving again. Nana was right, he feels terrible about it, 
Percy wonders about Gwen and what Arthur feels for her. He points out that Arthur's actions suggest he doesn't just see her as the mother of his child. Arthur admits he's always been drawn to Gwen ever since he laid eyes on her. He genuinely enjoyed their time together, and he's not the type to be with just anyone for the sake of it. He felt a connection with her and believed they could understand each other. Gwen makes him feel at ease, and he's determined to ensure she's looked after, along with their baby. This is his opportunity to have his own family, something he had given up on a long time ago. Percy acknowledges that it must be tough for Arthur to handle everything on his own. As a way of showing his gratitude for confiding in him about such a big deal, Percy offers to help with some of Arthur's work today, so he can leave the office early. As Camilla exits the building, she expresses frustration, questioning why they can't just sell the property. The man with her agrees with the lawyer, suggesting they should talk to Gwen about it. Camilla reacts incredulously, asking if he's lost his mind. They've been handling everything behind Gwen's back, and now he wants her to suddenly ask Gwen about it after not seeing her for months. She points out they don't even have a good enough relationship with Gwen to attempt that dot she's frustrated that they are facing this problem now just because she's seen as an illegitimate child, a fortune Gwen doesn't even care about. However, today she witnessed something intriguing that could be the key connected to her son. In Gwen's home, she tells Nana she managed to give it to him. She picks up Leon and expresses gratitude to Nana for always looking after him so well. Nana replies that she enjoys helping them both. With so many kind people around her now, Gwen's starting to feel like the villain, that evening, as Gwen takes a bath, she reflects on everything that happened today. From confronting Camilla to Arthur expressing his desire to be a family, she's unsure how to feel about it all. Arthur enters the house, asking where everyone is. He spots Leon, picks him up, and gives him a kiss, commenting on how he feels heavier already, even though it's only been three days, Gwen comes out with a towel, wondering if Nana forgot something because she heard voices. When she sees Arthur and Leon, Arthur covers Leon's eyes, and Gwen swiftly shuts the door. She shouts for Arthur to please ring the doorbell before barging into the house unannounced. As Arthur and Leon sit in the living room watching kids' songs, Gwen comes out, surprised that he's here already. She mentions he could have called her first. Arthur apologizes, explaining that Percy let him leave work early, and he got so caught up in the excitement that he forgot to call. He offers to help dry her hair, assuring her not to worry because he used to do it for his little sister. He explains that his little sister is sandwiched between them. He's the oldest sibling and has two younger sisters. There's a bit of an age gap between them, and his middle sister is probably around the same age as Gwen. He's 31, which surprises Gwen because she thought he was younger than her by five years, judging by his appearance and demeanor. He asks Gwen about her family, wondering if she has any siblings. Internally, she dreads this question, but she feels it's only fair to open up to him a bit. She tells him that both her parents have passed away, with her father's recent passing being particularly tough. He wasn't her biological father, but he took her in as his own. Her real father is now with his other family, the woman from earlier turns out to be her half-sister. She stayed with them for a while after their dad passed away, but Gwen feels like she wasn't really welcome. Arthur interrupts, asking Gwen to hold the hairdryer. He positions himself in front of the TV and starts putting on a performance. Gwen starts laughing and asks him what he's up to. After his performance, he offers Gwen some snacks, mentioning that he brought them along. When Gwen sees the snacks, she remarks that he brought a lot. He starts feeding her and asks if she likes them. Arthur mentions that Leon really enjoys the shark song. Gwen adds that even Nana complained about hearing it on repeat before leaving. As Arthur gazes at Gwen, she notices and asks what's on his mind. He brushes it off, saying it's nothing, but he just realized it's been a while since he saw her laugh. He suggests they hang out with Leon tomorrow if she's free. Gwen responds, saying he doesn't have to go to such lengths but Arthur asks if she doesn't want Leon to have a happy family, 
she explains that after losing her parents, the people who were supposed to be her closest family treated her terribly. Since then, she decided to live her life independently. All she wanted was to leave the past behind and move forward with Leon. Lately, she's been pondering what family really means, especially in relation to Leon. She believes he deserves to grow up with a father, more importantly, Leon deserves to grow up experiencing what a real happy family feels like. But it's important to acknowledge that they are not in love with each other. So, she advises him to focus on Leon. Pretending to be a family might end up hurting the child more if it doesn't work out. She knows this from first-hand experience. Arthur insists that he wouldn't go to such lengths for both of them if he only found her physically attractive. He asks Gwen to please give him a chance, at least to prove himself to both of them. Gwen mentions that his ex fiance was there that night. Thinking back to that night, Arthur turns to Gwen and casually asks for her room number, offering to escort her. Curious, Gwen remarks on how dependable he seems and wonders why his fiance would leave him. Arthur responds, acknowledging her perception of him, but also suggesting that not everyone shares the same view. He mentions that people say he never takes things seriously and just messes around, calling him worthless. Gwen quickly defends him, saying he's a good person and shouldn't let others make him feel worthless. Arthur holds her hand, admitting it might sound strange since they've only just met, but he feels at ease when he's with her. He inquires if she's currently in a relationship, and she replies with a no. Then, she wonders about his fiancé. Arthur explains that their relationship ended months ago. He clarifies that he only came on this trip because he didn't want to waste the reservations. He asks Gwen if she thinks they can keep seeing each other after the trip. Additionally, he invites her to spend the night with him. The next morning, Gwen wakes up and realizes it wasn't a dream. She's surprised at herself for being bold enough to have a one-night stand. But she wonders, is that all it was? Can two strangers become something more after just one night together? It would be nice if that were possible. As it's the last day of the trip, Gwen wonders if she should stay and wait. She'll need to let Carol know. Checking her phone, she sees numerous notifications. Among them, there's a message from her Aunt Lilia saying her father was rushed to the hospital earlier. Gwen quickly gets dressed and rushes out, but she's stopped by a lady at the door. I in the present moment, Gwen tells Arthur that while she was dealing with her dad's situation, she bumped into the ex fiance he mentioned. At that moment, she thought there might be a chance for them to reconcile. But she feels like she ruined it because of her own selfishness. Gwen recalls the expression on the ex fiance's face when she saw her, and she knows she'll never forget it. Arthur insists it's not possible. He explains that he has the guest list for the entire ship, which is how he found Gwen. Gwen mentions that the lady said her name was Elaine. Arthur steps closer to Gwen and reiterates that his relationship was over long before the trip began. He emphasizes that he's not seeing or dating anyone. He reminds Gwen that he already told her this before and mentions that he searched everywhere for her. He admits that finding out about Leon was just a coincidence, but all along, he was searching for her. Arthur apologizes, confessing that he looked into her background without her permission. Gwen shares that she also searched for him after finding out she was pregnant. Arthur kisses her head and apologizes again. He tells Gwen that's all he has to say for now. He admits he should have searched for her as soon as he could. He asks her to please give him another chance to prove himself to her, and to both of them, meanwhile, Carol meets with Lance and he learns that what Gwen told them last time wasn't the whole story. Carol admits she was too pushy that night. She explains that Gwen found out about her pregnancy around the time Uncle Leo passed away. Since she was there for Gwen during these events, she feels partially responsible for everything. What they're confused about now is why the guy is suddenly showing up when he's the one who didn't want to acknowledge Gwen's pregnancy. Even though they informed him about it, Lance points out they can't just take away his visitation rights since he's the child's father. They can only request a custody arrangement. However, it might be difficult if Gwen agrees to certain terms. At Gwen's home, 
she wonders aloud if they can truly provide a loving family for Leon. Arthur admits he can't be certain, but after hearing everything, he promises to do his best to resolve the misunderstandings. They can start by getting to know each other better, he suggests. Gwen agrees, saying they should do just that. The next day, at Gwen's house, Arthur suggests they start by seeing each other at least twice a week since they've agreed to give it a shot. He mentions he has limited time to prove himself to her, so they should adjust their schedules accordingly. Plus, if he wants to spend time with Leon, they need to be there too, as per their agreement, Arthur mentions that Gareth finished setting up the baby car seat for Leon. He's excited because now they can take Leon to more places, not just nearby. Arthur expresses his desire to buy more things for Leon and assures Gwen not to worry about the bill. He wants to provide for Leon as his father, Gwen mentions that Arthur is supposed to be really busy. Arthur responds that he doesn't want to miss the chance, in case Gwen changes her mind. Gwen then asks Nana if she's coming along. Nana declines, saying she doesn't want to intrude on their family bonding time. She suggests they enjoy themselves while she goes to change Leon's clothes. Gareth enters, greeting Gwen. He mentions he's brought Sir Leon a new baby carriage. Gwen internally wonders why they are calling Leon, Sir, when he's just a baby. She asks Gareth where Arthur is, and he explains that Arthur went to install the car seat himself, learning how from YouTube. Gwen asks if it'll be safe, and Gareth reassures her, saying he'll double-check before they leave. Gareth adds that Arthur was so excited last night, he asked for Gareth's help in getting a baby carrier that fits Sir Leon's size, Gareth has been lending a hand since day one, helping Gwen move in. But she realizes this is probably the first time they've had a proper conversation. Gareth mentions to her that it's been a while since he's seen Arthur looking this happy. I in the car park, Gwen apologizes to Arthur for making him wait. He suggests they get Leon settled in his seat. Gwen expresses a bit of concern about the car seat. As they sit in the car, Arthur mentions that this will be their first official trip together. He reminds her not to forget the seatbelt, teasing her playfully. As they arrive at the mall, Arthur mentions he wants to pick up some things for Leon and the house. Gwen questions if the new carrier isn't sufficient, but Arthur insists that Leon needs more clothes too. The manager of a boutique in the mall greets them warmly. Arthur informs the manager that they are in search of some baby clothes. Gwen mentions that Leon is growing so fast at his age, and it might be a waste to buy too much. The manager reassures her, saying they have a fantastic selection for his age. They begin trying on clothes for baby Leon, and they all look great on him. Gwen even snaps some pictures of him wearing the outfits. Arthur suggests to Gwen if she'd like to try something too, but she declines, saying she's fine. Inwardly, Arthur notes that she always seems uncomfortable whenever he offers her something. He wonders what he can do to make her accept his gestures. In the past, any woman he met would be thrilled to receive gifts like jewelry, clothes, or makeup. But with Gwen, it's different. His usual approach doesn't seem to work with her. Arthur suggests to Gwen if she'd like to try out the famous sweets shop nearby. She responds that if that's where he wants to go, she's okay with it. Arthur says they'll go after he finishes checking out, but if she spots something she wants, she should tell him right away. Arthur asks the manager if she has any suggestions for a dress that might suit Gwen. The manager suggests it might be better if he chose it for her. Arthur thinks to himself that he wants Gwen to fall for him, even just a little bit, during this date. While Gwen and Arthur are eating at the mall, he mentions that he arranged for the clothes to be delivered to her address. He asks if she's sure she's only getting that one item. Gwen confirms, explaining that she can't eat a lot because she's still nursing Leon. She needs to be careful about what she eats. Arthur ponders if what Gwen is experiencing is postpartum. He wonders about everything she must have gone through in the last year. He realizes he still has a lot to learn. Arthur encourages Gwen to eat more and mentions that he wants her to share more of her thoughts with him, or at least more about herself.
Like how she just talked about nursing Leon, Dottie tells Gwen that he wants to know anything she feels comfortable sharing. He explains that these trips are about more than just taking Leon out to new places. Gwen agrees, saying she'll do her best. As they finish eating, Arthur asks Gwen if she wants to go somewhere else before they head home. She responds that she can't think of anywhere to go, they spot a jolly bear, and Arthur brings Leon closer while Gwen snaps a picture of them. Suddenly, they notice Percy and his daughter. She mentions it's her birthday today, and she's turning four years old. Arthur asks Percy why he wasn't invited to his daughter's party. Percy explains that it's just him and her mother celebrating with her today. Arthur's ex-wife Bianca joins them, and Arthur introduces Gwen as his partner and their son's mother. Percy suggests they all join them, but Arthur declines, feeling that Fiora's birthday party should be celebrated among themselves. As they say goodbye and Percy leaves, Bianca asks him about the woman with Arthur. Percy explains that he met her on the cruise they went on. As Arthur explains to Gwen, Percy and Bianca are co parenting now, but Fiora mostly stays with her mom. He mentions it's good to see that it can work out, just in case their own situation goes sour. Gwen responds that she wants Leon to grow up with a family that stays together. Gwen thinks about the possibility of Leon growing up in a situation like hers with a cold, broken family. Arthur suggests she should hurry up and fall in love with him again. She wonders if she can truly fall in love with him once more. Despite feeling afraid, she decides to take the chance for the sake of her baby or rather, their baby. Sitting in the car, Arthur thinks to himself that even though nothing went exactly as planned, he's happy it ended well. The only downside is that now he doesn't want to say goodbye yet. This must be the first time he's thankful for traffic. When they arrive home, Arthur remarks how one minute Leon is sound asleep, and the next, he's wide awake. He finds babies really amusing. Arthur asks what Leon is doing now, and Gwen replies that he wants to eat. She thinks he must be hungry after waking up, considering he's been asleep for some time, Gwen prepares Leon's meal and feeds him. She asks Arthur if he wants to give feeding a try, and he agrees. However, when Arthur attempts to feed Leon, the baby refuses to eat. Gwen mentions that Leon is usually a foodie, suggesting that maybe he's just not used to being fed by others, and encourages Arthur to give it another try. After a little while, Arthur tries feeding Leon again, and this time, the baby eats without any fuss, Gwen mentions that they need to sort out their schedules. Tomorrow, Leon has a vaccination and a checkup scheduled, so they won't be available. Arthur says he'll join them. She asks if he doesn't have work, mentioning that he shouldn't let Percy handle too much of his workload. After all, he has a life outside of work with his own family, Arthur expresses his desire to be there for the appointment, understanding that it must be scary for an infant to receive all those shots. He believes Leon needs as much support as possible. Gwen mentions that it's scheduled for early in the morning, warning Arthur that there's a lot of waiting around and it can be pretty boring. However, Arthur responds that he's never bored as long as he's with both of them, Leon finishes his food, and Arthur asks Gwen if she thinks they've bonded more now. She suggests that if that's not enough to bond over, he could stay the night. It'll be easier since he's joining them tomorrow morning anyway. She tells him to go shower and get changed because they still need to finish aligning their schedules for the week. I in the bathroom. Arthur mentions he never expected Gwen to be the one inviting him to stay over. He sees it as making some progress. It hit him earlier that Leon still doesn't see him as his dad, at least not yet. He realizes he'll need to do his best to get closer to both of them. As he steps out of the bathroom, he spots Gwen and asks if she's going to give Leon a bath. She confirms and he expresses his interest in trying to give Leon a bath too. Inside the bathroom, as they bathe Leon, Arthur starts joking around, using the soap bubbles to play with both Gwen and Leon, after the bath. Gwen dresses Leon, and Arthur enters her room, commenting on how calm Leon usually is. Gwen warns him that Leon might not always be so peaceful. Arthur then decides to lay down on her bed, 
mentioning that he's tired too. Surprised, Gwen questions what he's doing, and he responds that they still need to discuss their schedules, assuring her that he's willing to adjust his to match hers. She tells him to cut out the jokes and suggests they discuss things outside. Arthur takes her hand and admits he's nervous, not just now, but every time they are together. He acknowledges that being embarrassed won't help him with either of them, so he's trying his best to overcome his nerves to get to know her better. Drawing her closer, he asks for permission and kisses her. After the kiss, Arthur plants a kiss on her forehead and bids her good night. He heads to check on Leon. In the living room, Arthur wonders if he's rushing things. They had a great time on the cruise, but now her expression seems different from back then. Gwen's phone buzzes, and she steps out to grab it, realizing she left it behind. She bids Arthur good night and heads to her room. Checking her phone, Gwen finds a message from Carol. She thinks to herself that they agreed to discuss things again at the law firm. Perhaps Carol is just calling to remind her, Gwen gets a text from Arthur with their family photo. She thinks to herself that she's usually pretty calm, but he always manages to make her feel flustered. Maybe it's because of his mole, it's so distracting. He did ask her to share her thoughts with him, so she figures she could be more honest. She replies to his message, saying she had fun. The next morning, Gwen wakes up, thinking she'd usually be woken up by Leon crying. She checks his crib, but he's not there. Panicked, she rushes outside and sees Arthur wearing an apron, holding a plate of food. He greets Gwen and asks if she slept well. She shouts, telling Arthur he shouldn't take Leon away like that. Arthur apologizes, explaining that he woke up early and wanted to take care of him so she could sleep in a bit longer than usual. He offers her breakfast, admitting he can't cook anything fancy, but he thinks she'll like what he made. Nana comes in, greeting everyone. Arthur explains that he asked Nana to bring some clothes for him for work so he can head there right after Leon's checkup. He suggests they try the breakfast he made. As they taste it, Nana remarks that she'll make something else. Arthur asks if it's that bad, and she responds that it's too salty, from failing to change a diaper to trying to help Gwen get some rest, and then failing to cook a meal, she figures he'll manage to do something successfully helpful next. All of this reminds her what it's like to get help from others, to feel like she can rely on them. But if she wants everything to continue like this, they'll have to discuss their legal terms soon. She feels terrible. At the hospital, Arthur walks up to the receptionist and tells her they are here for Leon's checkup. Meanwhile, the nurses gossip about them, saying how lucky Leon's mom is and how cute the baby is, while filling out the form for Leon there's a bit of confusion about his last name. Arthur brings up the topic of marriage, and Gwen questions if he's absolutely certain about it, expressing concerns about potential regrets. Arthur reassures her that he's been consistent in saying he won't regret it. Gwen decides to go and submit the form herself. After a while, they call for Leon Moranti, and a lady standing behind Gareth and Nana overhears. She remarks that she wasn't imagining things earlier. Turning to them, she asks if they'd like to share more details. Nana is shocked to see the lady addressing her as Lady Fave. She thinks to herself that when she went to pack up the stuff Arthur wanted, the lady was waiting there. She hasn't had a chance to tell him since he's been so excited to be with Gwen, but she hopes she'll have the opportunity soon. How does this lady know about Arthur's son? Fave tells Nana that the physical exam will take a while, so she should let Arthur know she'll wait for him at his office. She also mentions she needs to get her iced Americano coffee. Then it's time for Leon's checkup. The doctor says they need to measure his weight and height first. Leon starts crying, but Arthur manages to make him laugh. After the checkup, the doctor says everything looks good, but they'll need to watch his weight for now. He's more than one kilogram over the ideal weight for his height and age. The doctor asks if when he cries, Gwen tends to try and feed him first to quiet him down, and Gwen says yes, the doctor reassures her, saying it's normal. Sometimes just a peaceful setting or a soft touch can help him feel better. Plus, 
they advise against letting babies use screens too much. Besides the growth concerns, it's been proven that too much screen time can make kids gain too much weight. Arthur mentions that it's preferable for Leon to be a bit heavier than too thin. He looks forward to the future when they can hit the gym together. The doctor informs them that it's time for Leon to get his shots. As they give Leon his shots, he starts crying, and they do their best to soothe him. Gwen usually came to these checkups solo or with Carol, but today's different. She never thought it could be enjoyable. After the appointment, Arthur offers to drive her home, but he's got to rush to work. She tells him not to stress, reminding him it's important to focus on work sometimes. While Arthur kisses Leon, Gwen wonders if he wants to kiss her too. But he just gently strokes her face and says he'll call if he can visit again. She agrees with a simple okay. Nana interrupts, calling for Arthur. Gwen then asks Gareth if they can make a quick stop at the mall before going home, but tells him not to tell Arthur about it. Gwen thinks to herself that Arthur has been really trying hard to take care of them, so she wants to do something nice for him in return. She mentions to Gareth that she wants to buy Arthur a gift to show him gratitude for all his help. Gareth agrees. Just then, Arthur comes over and informs them that he's off duty. Gwen notices Arthur's expression and asks Nana if something's up, but Nana assures her it's nothing. At the mall, Gwen browses for a gift for Arthur, but everything seems pricey. Nana tells her not to get disheartened just yet. If you had asked Gwen a while back if she'd consider doing something like this, she'd probably have been annoyed at the idea. After all, Arthur has always been a jerk to her. I mean, who shows up in someone's life unexpectedly with a scary lawyer and then brings tension when they meet again? She used to worry that Arthur might try to take Leon away from her completely, and honestly, he could have done it easily. He's got way more money and connections than she does. It's been freaking her out this whole time. Now she's starting to wonder if getting Lance involved was even needed. Maybe Carol was just being overly anxious about everything. She's thinking it's still a bit early to make a final call, but the way Arthur's been acting lately is making it pretty clear he's not aiming to take Leon away. Before, she never bothered to give Arthur a chance, but now she's got others stepping up to help her out. But one thing she's sure of is that she's starting to find joy in life again. Thanks to Arthur and the new folks he's introduced into her life, Gwen's anxiety is fading away bit by bit each day. But honestly, she's not sure if that's a good or bad thing because everything's going so smoothly. She's wondering if it'll last. Later, when Arthur's with his friends, Fave notices he seems preoccupied with something else today. She teasingly calls him her big bro, leaving him momentarily speechless, just calling her name. Arthur asks Fave what she's doing here. She gets up and asks why he's being so cold. She wonders if he isn't happy to see her. She says she can't believe him and explains she's only here because there have been complaints about him missing work recently. He says he heard from Nana that Fave already knows. She says she didn't mean to get into his business. She was out shopping when she saw him with a woman she didn't know. At first, she thought it was just someone else, but the kid looked exactly like him. She went to his home to talk to him about it, but found out he was staying with the woman and the kid. She asks who the lady is, and he tells her to mind her own business. She asks if their aunt knows about it, and he says no, she's the one person who should never find out. Fave says that either way, it's big news. She thinks it makes sense because he's always been very responsible, so this seems like a perfect fit for him. She says that ever since their father died, he's been so focused on taking over the company that he didn't have time for anything else. Honestly, she didn't think he'd settle down after Elaine. She asks if he plans on telling their mother about it, and he says it's not like he's been trying to keep it a secret. He just wants to get some things figured out first, with all the misunderstandings, he hasn't been able to tell Gwen about his condition yet. He knows he needs to tell her eventually. It's important that she understands why Leon means so much to him. He wants to explain everything to her, but he's scared. The last time something like this happened, it really hurt him, 
and he doesn't want to go through that pain again. He worries that sharing this part of his life might end up causing more problems, but he also knows that keeping it a secret isn't right either. He's stuck between wanting to be honest and not wanting to be hurt again. At the mall, Nana says she's curious about how Artie will react when she gives him the present. Gwen hopes he'll like her gift. She then asks if everything was okay earlier. Nana says there's nothing to worry about. Everything's fine. Gwen gets a call from Arthur and tells Nana that he says he'll visit later. Nana asks if she's okay with his late, unexpected visits. Gwen says she doesn't mind. Then, she asks what kind of food he usually likes because she wants to return the favor since he made breakfast earlier. They chat about it for a bit before continuing with their day at the mall. Back at the office, Arthur says he can't believe she actually agreed. Fave says she can't wait to see her sister-in-law. Arthur wonders if Gwen would agree to be called that too. Fave tells him to trust her because she's a woman with five years of marriage experience after all. They share a laugh and continue talking about the upcoming visit. They both head to the meeting room to meet with their aunt and other people for business. Arthur tells the attorney they'll catch up later. The aunt introduces the sellers, Mr. and Mrs. Cruz, who turn out to be Camilla and her husband. They exchange greetings and start discussing the business matters at hand. As the meeting begins, Arthur realizes he's seen them before. He remembers that she was harassing Gwen in public. If he recalls correctly, she's Gwen's half sister. Now, they are telling him that they are the ones who own the land they need to acquire to kickstart Dad's last housing project. Arthur silently processes this revelation while the meeting continues, back at home, Gwen says goodbye to Nana and Gareth as they leave. Once they are gone, she turns to Leon and tells him he was really brave. She mentions how much she enjoyed going to the checkup with his dad, but for now, it will be their little secret. They share a smile and go about their day at home together, gradually, Arthur's surprise visits are becoming a regular part of Gwen's day something she eagerly anticipates. At the office, after the meeting ends, Arthur chats with Camilla and her husband. He mentions that according to their legal team, the land doesn't actually belong to them. He offers to help them out, but has one condition in mind. It's really important that she apologizes to Gwen. Arthur stresses that she needs to say sorry sincerely and take a good look at her actions. He's aware of what happened between her and Gwen, including the not-so-nice stuff. Camilla nods, showing she gets it. Arthur adds that it's best for her to do it sooner rather than later. After Arthur leaves, Camilla starts laughing, saying he isn't really that smart. She mentions Gwen casually, wondering who would think she could catch a guy like him. Now that she's 100% sure he's the one, the father of Gwen's kid, she's confident. She believes they'll see who ends up apologizing to whom if this little scandal goes public. In a flashback when Gwen was little, she asks her dad if she's an abandoned child. Her father assures her that he'll never leave her alone. He hopes that as she grows up, she'll find someone who will always be there for her. They share a tender moment, and Gwen feels comforted by her father's words, right now, Arthur wakes Gwen up from her sleep. He asks if she's okay, and Fave greets her, saying she's Arthur's prettiest little sister. Fave rushes over to Gwen and holds her hand, asking if she can call her Gwen's sister-in-law. Gwen hesitates a bit, thinking sister-in-law is a bit too much. Fave sees Leon and quickly rushes over to pick him up. As Gwen looks at them together, she wonders where her jeans went. Arthur apologizes, saying he's sorry that Fave kept insisting on meeting her. He really didn't want anyone to find out yet. Fave explains she just wanted a proper introduction. Gwen reassures them it's all right. She mentions she's prepared some stuff for dinner and will get everything ready right away. I in the kitchen, Arthur apologizes to Gwen. She asks if he's okay with it, with a family member knowing about them. He admits he didn't want anyone to find out yet. Arthur says he guesses it's okay if it's Fave, if anyone was going to find out, she's the best case scenario. He gently touches her face and notices she seems tired. 
Arthur asks if she was getting everything ready just because he said he was coming over, and Gwen responds, saying Nana told her he likes it, and this is her payment for the breakfast he made. Arthur insists she should take care of herself too. Just then, Fave walks into the kitchen, calling them love birds. She hopes they are cooking food. Fave then turns to Leon and says he might become a big brother soon. As they eat, Fave compliments the food, and Gwen offers to teach her if she wants. Fave takes Gwen's hands and says she can't believe her brother found someone like her a sweetheart, cute, and kind. Fave even jokes that she wants Gwen to be her wife instead. Gwen thinks to herself that since Arthur comes from a wealthy family, she was worried his family would be like something out of a drama. She feels relieved that Fave isn't like that. She can tell she's a nice person. Seeing their close sibling bond makes her feel happy and grateful to be a part of their family dinner. Fave asks if Gwen is all right, and Gwen confirms she is. Fave mentions that Gwen might be wondering why she's here. She explains that her mom's birthday is coming up and suggests that Gwen and Leon join them. Fave thinks it would be a good opportunity to introduce Leon to the family. Gwen expresses concern about whether they'll accept them, but Fave reassures her, saying it won't happen. Flashback at the office, Fave expresses disbelief to Arthur, wondering why he's so wishy washy. All this talk about lawyers and custody battles is enough to make any woman nervous about trusting him. She emphasizes that she's not involved with anyone else. They both have a child, and they are clearly attracted to each other. In her opinion, he should just take the plunge and propose already. They can make it a memorable occasion and start their journey together with a bang. Arthur wonders to himself if Gwen will still accept him if she finds out the truth about him being sterile. He figures they already have Leon, so maybe she won't judge him too harshly or be against having their family together. He ponders if she'll be okay with meeting his friends too, right now, Gwen suggests they should meet his family. After dinner, while Gwen washes the dishes, Arthur apologizes about his sister, saying her energy was overwhelming. Gwen agrees but mentions she doesn't hate it. Arthur expresses his happiness that she agreed to meet his family. He thought she might decline, but Gwen explains she was actually thinking it would be best for Leon. Arthur grabs Gwen's hands and holds them tightly. He asks if she's really doing this just for their child, still seeking reassurance about their relationship. He expresses his hope that she's also considering what's best for herself and for both of them. Fave enters, suggesting she'll take care of Leon tonight since she has more free time. This way, they can enjoy some quality time together. They agree, and Gwen suggests to Arthur that they meet up later. She mentions they have some things they need to discuss in private. Later that evening, Fave mentions to Gwen that she didn't think Gwen would agree to her offer so easily. Gwen explains she was actually just thinking they needed to have a serious talk, so she appreciates the help. Fave responds, hoping her first impression wasn't bad and that Gwen doesn't find her rude. Gwen quickly reassures her, saying not at all. Fave thanks Gwen and expresses her hope that they can get closer, especially since they are the same age and now family with Leon here. She admits she's just worried about her brother, he's not the quickest with this stuff. Fave mentions she was surprised when she saw them at the mall, not just because of Leon and Gwen, but because her brother looked genuinely happy. After chatting for a while, Fave admits she's the one who suggested the cruise as a proposal idea. She feels guilty about it. Gwen then reveals they actually met during the last day of that cruise. Fave immediately hugs her, feeling touched by the connection they share. In the second room, Arthur mentions Gwen wanted to talk in private, but he's not sure why they have to be in this room. He wonders what Gwen and Fave are up to. Meanwhile, in Gwen's room, Fave promises to take good care of Leon while she's away. Gwen thinks to herself how close Arthur and Fave are, they really look out for each other. She also realizes it's time to have a serious talk with Arthur about their relationship and define where they are headed. Gwen walks into the room where Arthur is getting dressed. He assures her he'll be done quickly and suggests she take a seat. 
Arthur hopes the invitation to his mom's birthday wasn't a burden. Gwen admits she's okay with it, but she's also a little scared. Arthur comforts her, saying she'll be fine because she has him. He promises to be there and guide her when the time comes, she expresses her amazement at how kind he is. She admits she can't quite understand him. They barely know each other, and when they first met, it was just a one-night stand. Even after she tells him he's welcome to visit Leon anytime, he goes as far as saying he wants to marry her. She thinks he should tell her what they are, define their relationship. When she's with him, she tries to convince herself it's only for Leon's sake, that being here with him is solely for Leon. She hates how she can never seem to act like her old self when she's around him. Suddenly, Arthur steps closer to her and admits that he likes her. He genuinely wants to be with her. His words catch her off guard, making her pause and consider what he's saying. He tells her that he's not usually this kind to just anyone, it's because it's her. He moves in close, almost trying to kiss her, but then he pulls back, apologizing. He says she's just so cute. He asks if he can hug her instead, and she agrees. He wraps his arms around her, saying he doesn't like it when she gets mad at him. They share a warm embrace, both feeling a sense of comfort in each other's arms. She wonders if he would still like her if she told him she had a meeting with her own lawyers regarding the situation. He assures her, saying of course he would. She asks if he isn't mad, and he responds by saying isn't that a normal reaction when he initially came at her with lawyers. However, he's glad she opened up about it. He explains that he talked to his own legal team about everything, and they advised that it would be best if they come to an agreement, Arthur lies on the bed, admitting he was worried their talk would be dark and heavy, full of fighting. He's relieved that it's not. Spotting the gift bag, he asks what it is. Gwen hands it to him, explaining it's for always taking care of Leon. He opens it and finds a hairband inside. Arthur smiles, saying he really likes it. He asks her if she can put it on him before she heads back. She helps him with it, and he thanks her. She brings up how he mentioned he isn't this kind to just anyone. But she remembers the first time she saw him, he was surrounded by women. She wonders how many people he dated before. Then, she quickly says he should forget it, she shouldn't have asked something like that so suddenly. She reassures him she's not trying to pressure him into anything. He admits he doesn't quite know how to respond. It's true, he's dated several people before. Of course, he's here for Leon too, but he'll never forget how she was there for him at his lowest. Just her presence cheered him up. After a short while, she decides she should head back. Deep down, she doesn't want him to notice how she's starting to feel happy when they are together. That's why she's always in a hurry to leave. But for some reason, she always ends up feeling inexplicably sad later on. It's a mystery she can't quite figure out. Arthur stops her at the door and asks if she'd like to stay the night. He gets very close to her, admitting he's already reaching his limit. Suddenly, he kisses her passionately. But just then, Leon starts crying. Gwen rushes out saying she'll go check on them. Fave explains it's an emergency, Leon's temperature is pretty high. Everyone's attention shifts to tending to Leon, putting their other plans on hold. Gwen checks his temperature and confirms it's a fever. Arthur tries to reassure her, saying she shouldn't worry. Fave is currently on the phone with a specialist. Gwen asks if there are any pediatricians who will see them even at this hour. She's concerned because his temperature has never been this high before. She wonders what she should do next, feeling anxious about Leon's health, Arthur tells her to calm down and suggests wiping him with a cool, damp cloth to ease his temperature. Later on, Fave informs them that it's from the vaccine shot, and it's a common side effect. She advises them to keep trying to cool him down regardless. Faith gives him a fever medicine and mentions that Gwen should have it around because babies at this age are prone to getting sick. They follow Faith's advice, feeling relieved to know what's causing Leon's fever, 
and how to help him feel better. They'll still need to monitor his temperature, checking every four hours. Arthur quickly runs off to get medicines. He admits to himself that this has made him realize he still has a lot to learn about being a good parent. He wonders what he would have done if Fave wasn't with them, and what he'll do in the future when she's not around. He told Gwen not to panic, but deep down, he's also feeling a bit panicked himself. At home, Gwen thanks Fave, expressing how she doesn't know what she would have done without her here. She feels like Fave knows everything there is to know. Fave dismisses it, saying it's not true. Unlike Gwen, she admits she sucks at cooking and really any chore. Fave jokes that she's only good at taking care of kids, and that's mainly thanks to their big family on their mother's side who taught her everything she knows about it. She admits she's actually running away from a big fight with her husband. Coming across Gwen and her brother was just by accident, though it ended up working out in both of their favors. She apologizes for lying about her intentions for being here, but she assures Gwen that the things they talked about earlier and asking her to their mom's birthday were all genuine. Gwen reassures her, saying she's always welcome to stop by, and she hopes she and her husband can reconcile soon. Arthur rushes in, saying he got the meds she listed. He mentions that Fave's husband called, asking if she was here and if they are fighting again. Fave told him she wasn't here to hide. Arthur then asks Gwen how Leon is doing, and she responds that it looks like his condition is getting better. She expresses gratitude that he and his sister are both here. Gwen apologizes for freaking out earlier, feeling relieved that Leon is improving and appreciating their support. Arthur admits he wasn't prepared for the situation, but he's determined to learn more about how to take care of children. He wants to become a better parent. He then picks up Leon. Gwen asks Arthur if he could come meet someone with her. They still need to come to an agreement on custody. Arthur agrees, feeling ready to face whatever challenges come their way as they navigate parenthood together. Gwen mentions she was thinking of introducing him to her best friend, the one she was with during the cruise. Arthur expresses he'd be happy to but wonders what changed her mind. She explains it's because he invited her to meet his family, so she wanted to return the kindness. She adds that Carol is the closest thing to family for her and Leon. Carol has helped her a lot over the past few years. Arthur suggests he should bring her something as a thanks. As they continue to talk, they hear Fave saying sorry and crying. Arthur remarks that it sounds like things are all good with Fave now, at least. In Gwen's room, she brings Arthur some new towels for Leon. She compliments him, saying he's getting better at handling Leon. Arthur admits he's way better with toddlers than older kids, but with babies, he still feels like he has a lot to learn. He thinks to himself that it's because he never thought he'd have a chance to have his own baby. Gwen asks Arthur if everything is okay, and he replies that he was just a bit lost in thought. He then asks if the kiss earlier made her upset, but Gwen remains at a loss for words. Arthur suggests they can talk about it more another time. He proposes they rest now that Leon is a bit calmer. Gwen inquires if he's sleeping here too, and he responds that Fave is occupying the room she was supposed to use. He reassures her, saying he probably won't do anything. He invites her to come to him, and they both lay on the bed. Gwen admits to herself that she never thought she'd want Leon to cry. She wonders if she's the only one feeling anxious. Arthur tells her that time flies when they are alone. He confesses he thought he would be satisfied if he could visit here at least once or twice a week, but it looks like that's not the case. He expresses that he wants to see her every day because they are both so precious to him. Turning the other way, he mentions he's also excited to meet Carol so he can personally thank her. Gwen holds onto his shirt from the back and says goodnight. As she reflects, she keeps thinking she's only doing all of this for Leon's sake. However, she finds herself being pulled more and more into Arthur's world, unable to resist the connection they share. The next morning, Faith mentions she ended up staying up all night to talk to her husband and the kids. She sees Leon and Nana and expresses relief that Leon is looking better now. 
Nana greets her, and Arthur suggests he'll go on ahead first. He tells Fave she should go home and make up with her husband, Gwen hands him a lunchbox, mentioning she made him some lunch. She tells him he should take it if he wants it. He thanks her, saying it'll be great. Then he brings up the meeting with her friend, and she says she was just about to ask her about a time. He suggests she should let him know if their schedules line up, and she adds that he should check if he forgot something, calling him Mr. Moranti. He kisses the back of her head and suggests she should start by calling him by his name like last night. Then he dashes off. Later on, Fave bids them goodbye. Gwen reflects to herself that it feels a little late now, but she feels the need to set things right. She's determined to address any lingering issues and ensure that everything is resolved properly. Later that day, Gwen is getting ready to go out. She tells Nana to contact her about Leon's condition from time to time and assures her she'll be back soon. Gwen arrives at Carol's house and hopes she isn't bothering her while she's on leave from work. Carol reassures her, saying she could never bother her because they are family. They share a warm moment, grateful for each other's support and understanding. Gwen admits it might seem a little sudden, but she'd like Carol to meet Arthur. Carol is taken aback and asks what this is all about so suddenly, wondering if Arthur is forcing Gwen into this. Gwen reassures her, saying it's nothing like that. They had a talk and decided to handle things amicably. She suggests maybe Lance could join them too, to make it a friendly gathering. Carol serves them food and casually remarks that Gwen has a lot of explaining to do. Gwen explains that she was the one who proposed the idea of Arthur meeting her because Carol is the only real family she could think of. Carol responds, saying that's not all there is to the story. Gwen mentions that every time Arthur stops by, he always goes above and beyond for her and Leon. It inspires her to want to put in the same amount of effort. She thinks to herself that maybe if she does that, things will work out this time. Carol remarks that Gwen is always thinking of others before herself, and that's her kind of love. Carol expresses her relief that Gwen is finally able to speak to her about what she really wants. After enduring the past few years, she was worried Gwen would never open up like this again. Carol admits she's always felt the need to protect Gwen and Leon because Gwen can be overly kind. However, she realizes now that it wasn't necessary as Gwen is strong in her own way. Gwen shares her perspective, saying she believes they may have misunderstood Arthur. Despite her sometimes cold behavior towards him, he's always been patient and understanding. He's carefree by nature, but he takes her anxieties and Leon's well-being seriously. No matter what, he remains reliable and supportive, which she appreciates deeply, Carol laughs remarking that normally she would be more pushy about Gwen's issues, but she's never seen Gwen like this before. If Gwen truly believes it's the best decision for her and for Leon, then Carol will support her in this new endeavor. However, she warns Arthur that if he ever does anything to make Gwen upset again, she's going to smack him. Carol asks Gwen what she plans to do about Lance, and Gwen explains that she and Arthur both agreed it would be best to have a formal agreement to resolve the dispute. Carol then mentions Lance's feelings towards Gwen, hoping she's aware of them. Gwen has always tried to ignore Lance's feelings, because she didn't want to assume anything in case she was wrong. But after spending so many years with the same feeling, she finally understood its severity. He chose a good career path over her, and she can't blame him. What did she even feel that day? Was she sad? Was she angry? She can't even remember. Gwen says she wants to apologize properly to him for disrupting everything, and Carol asks if Arthur knows about her family situation. Gwen replies that he knows a bit. No matter how much she tries to stay quiet, she guesses he's always bound to find out about it. Her sister, Camilla, and her husband were at Arthur's office when she went to visit. Carol asks what they were doing there, and Gwen says she doesn't know. By the looks of it, Arthur didn't know either. He ended up protecting her from Camilla's pettiness. Carol wonders what's Camilla's damage. 
Gwen ended up moving in with her to get away from them after her dad passed. Is Camilla really jealous of her, or is she just a sadist? Gwen's phone rings, and it's a video call from Arthur's number. She answers, but Percy's face appears on the call. Arthur then shows his face, apologizing for the mix-up as the camera flipped. Gwen introduces Carol, and Arthur says he's Leon's dad. He's really happy to meet someone so close to Gwen, and is excited to see Carol soon. Carol responds with a casual cool. Carol's phone rings, and she rushes off to get it. Arthur mentions he's super excited about eating the lunch Gwen made for him today. Percy chimes in, saying Arthur told him he wasn't allowed to eat any. Gwen reassures Arthur that he didn't have to do a video call. Arthur explains he has an urgent meeting later today, so he doesn't think he'll be able to visit her and Leon tonight. Gwen reassures Arthur that it's all right, understanding his need to focus on work. Arthur persists, expressing his longing to see her face and how much he misses her. Gwen reflects on how effortlessly he expresses his feelings, which always brighten her day. She marvels at his ability to convey such emotions with ease. Suddenly, Lance enters the room, interrupting their conversation. Gwen quickly apologizes for not giving much notice, but appreciates Lance joining them. Lance brushes it off, saying it's not a big deal. Gwen mentions she hoped their next meeting would be under happier circumstances, but it's about her case this time. Lance asks if she's made her decision, and Gwen confirms. Lance mentions he had a feeling since it was a sudden call, but assures her she'll have his support in whatever she decides. He adds that he still believes she needs a written agreement, just to be safe. Gwen agrees, mentioning that Arthur also suggested it, and it aligns with what his legal team advised. Lance nods, noting that Arthur's attorney is his mentor, so it's logical. They should start by listing everything Gwen requires for the agreement, but if there's anything too extreme, he'll have to mention it. Carol suggests that Gwen should ask for monthly child support from Arthur. Gwen was nervous about bringing up such a serious matter like their legal dispute with everyone, but they've all been really supportive of her situation, especially Lance. There was a time when Lance didn't care about school at all. Gwen tried to get him to focus, but he wouldn't budge. However, after that phase, things got better and school became fun for him, right now, Gwen apologizes for interrupting, but she needs to go home because Nana needs to get back to her place soon. Lance says he'll leave too, outside, as they stroll along. Lance mentions how late it's getting and suggests accompanying Gwen home. She assures him she'll be fine, but he insists, mentioning how it's been ages since they had a chance to chat alone. Just then, raindrops start falling, but Gwen confidently pulls out her trusty umbrella. Lance, however, proposes they make a quick stop at the nearest convenience store to grab an umbrella, just in case. As they continue walking, Lance elaborates on his point. He emphasizes the importance of mutual agreement in situations like these. It's not just about reaching a compromise. It's about finding a solution that both parties genuinely feel good about. He adds that he's concerned about Gwen's well-being and wants to ensure she's being treated with kindness and respect in her relationship. If you're eager for the next chapter, drop a comment expressing your interest in a part 4. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated. Until next time, ciao.